Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will show you how to use the Events Calendar plugin with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The Events Calendar plugin is the leading WordPress event management plugin, with over 700,000 active installs, and it's also one of the Avada recommended plugins. Avada offers full styling integration for the events calendar, and it's easy to use and integrate into your Avada website. So if you're looking to add events to your site, look no further. An events calendar pro version is also available, which adds four more event views, the ability to create recurring events and event series, plus short codes and other functionality. But for many users, the free version will be enough. Let's look at how to set up and use this awesome plugin. It all starts with installation, and here it couldn't be easier. Just go to Avada, Plugins, where you can install and activate the plugin with a single click. Just mouse over the events calendar and click Install. You can also update the plugin from here, or if you prefer, you can also do it from the WordPress plugins page. Of course, if you follow best practice, you will always have a full backup of your site and test your updates on the staging server first. If you import an Avada pre-built site that uses the events calendar, and currently there are eight of those, you will be prompted to install it during the import process. I have the church pre-built imported here, and so I already have the plugin installed and activated. Once you have the plugin installed, you will see the events menu on the dashboard sidebar. Under this menu you will find a whole range of sub-menus, and the best place to start is settings. The events calendar works great out of the box, but there are a lot of options to customise the plugin just how you want it. A good place to start, of course, is the official documentation, and there are links here to the Getting Started Guide and the Knowledge Base. There are way too many settings to go through individually, but some of the more notable options on the General tab are the Events URL slugs, where you can set the slugs for your main calendar page and single event pages. And under the Display tab, the Enabled and Default Event Views. By default, List, Month and Day are all enabled, and List is the default view. Take your time and go through all the options here, but as I mentioned, the events calendar works great out of the box, and you can always come back here to tweak settings. If you get serious about your events, head to the Event Add-on subpage, and here you will find a range of add-ons to really up your game. The events calendar has an add-on for event tickets that works fine with Avada as well. OK, so let's look at the actual events. I'll just go to Events, and here we can see all the added events in this pre-built. Let's edit one of these events to look at the interface. As you can see here, there is the WordPress editor at the top, where you can add any content for the event, and below this is the Events Calendar panel, where specific information about the event is added, such as date, locations, organizers, and price. By default, the Event Custom Post Type is not registered for use with the Avada Builder, which is why we have plain content here, and we don't see any Builder links at the top of the page. But to use the Builder for the Event Content section, just head to Options, Builder Options, from the Avada dashboard, and under the list of Avada Builder elements, you will see Post Types. Here, just make sure there's a tick next to Event, and save your changes. If I reload now, we can see I can use the Avada Builder for the event content. Just note the actual Events Calendar panel cannot be accessed from the Live Builder, so if you want to use the Live Builder for the content, just add your event information first, and save it before moving to the Live Builder for the content. So now let's look at the event calendar panel here. At the top there is the time and date section, with a start and end date and time for the event. Note that events can also be all day events. And note here the time zone link. If you haven't set your site to a geographical location, and instead have it set to UTC time, you will see a message at the top of the page telling you it's better to set your time as a geographical time, to avoid issues with daylight savings. You can change that in the WordPress settings at Settings General. But if you already have events here like I do, you'll have to change the time zone in the events as well. Next is location. There is a venue chosen here for this event, but you can also choose a new venue or create a new location right from this option if you need a new one by clicking on the drop down and adding a new venue. You then click on create and populate your new venue with the venue information. One thing to note is that with the events calendar pro, you can add multiple venues to your events. Here, I'll just restore the original location. The next section is Organizers. Again, there's already one selected, but you can also have multiple organizers if you want, so you can select another one, 
or you can also create them on the fly by clicking on Add Another Organizer, or you can go to Events Organizers and set them all up individually. Under this is an Event Website section. If the event has a specific URL, you can add that here. Finally, under this is the Event Cost section. Here you set your currency symbol and add a price for the event. If it's free, just add zero and it will display as free, or you can leave it blank to completely hide the field. At the very bottom of the Events Calendar panel, you will see any additional functionality you may have if you have any add-ons. On the right-hand side of the page, there are also some other relevant options for the event. You can add tags, just like you can with a blog post or portfolio, and you can create or select a category or categories for the event. As well, specific event options are available under this to hide any particular event from the event listings, to make it sticky in the month view, and to make it a featured event. Then there is an event status section where you can change from the default scheduled to cancelled or postponed. Finally under this, this is where you add a featured image for the event. Make sure it's big enough to fill the full width of the content area. And as the description notes, a 16 to 9 aspect ratio is recommended for featured images. Below this there is the Avada Events Calendar Event Options, which is the equivalent of the Avada Page Options for this custom post type. And here you can control a range of layout options just for this individual event. There are also several sections in the Avada Global Options that relate to the Events Calendar. To start, there is the General Events Calendar tab, found under Options, Events Calendar. Here you can set a range of options, mostly around event colours, but also one for the hover type of the featured image, and another for font size of the month and day separator headings on Events Archive pages. Then there are the Events Single Post Options where you can control the layout and styling of the single event pages. Having a sidebar for the event single post meta layout is the default here, but as has been done on the online tutor pre-built here for example, you can also place it under the content. There's even an option to disable it. There are options for the width of the sidebars, and in the bottom section, you can style the event single post sidebar meta content as you want. Finally, under Sidebars Events Calendar, you have the option of adding other sidebars to the event's pages. OK, so let's now look at a new event to see the process in action. I'll just go to Events, Add New, and call this one Family Concert. To save some time, I'll just add some plain lorem ipsum here as my event content, and move on to the Event Calendar panel. I'll choose a date for my event, and a start and finish time. So now we come to adding a location and organizer. As I mentioned before, you can add these on the fly, but you can also set them up separately from adding an event. You do that from the WordPress sidebar at Venues and Organizers. As you can see, here you can view and edit your existing venues and add relevant details, and you can create new venues from here as well. It's exactly the same for organizers. OK, so let's go back and choose a venue for our new event, and I think I will show a map here as well. One thing to note is that with the Events Calendar Pro, you can add multiple venues to your event. So next, I'll choose an organizer. I'll add a URL for the event, and set a price, and now I'll move over to the right-hand panel. I'll just add a few tags, and select a category or two for the event. Under this is Event Options, and I don't think I need to select any of these. Under this is Event Status, and mine is Scheduled, but you can also change this to cancelled or postponed if necessary. And of course I will add a featured image. I just need to make sure this image will be big enough to cover the width of the site content less the sidebar, as it will be used at the top of the event. OK, that's all I need to do here, so let's publish this event. And now let's take a look at this single event on the front end. Here it is, and we can see our featured image at the top, with our editor content under that. Down the right hand side are our event details, venue and organizer, and at the bottom are options for adding to Google Calendar and iCal Export, as well as some social sharing options and pagination to the previous or the next event, or both depending on the dates of the events. With Avada's integrated styling, this looks fabulous. If you have the Pro version enabled, you also get related events at the bottom as well. OK, so that's a single event. What about multiple events, the calendar in Events Calendar? Remember the Events URL slug in the settings? By default that's Events, and it's here on the menu, so if we head to that URL, we can see the default calendar view for all events. It is set to List View in the plugin settings, so that's what we get. 
As you can see along the top here, you can search for events, and you can also change the view to any of the other enabled views. The month view, for example, is a calendar, and we can see the events in this month here, and if we mouse over them, we get a preview. If I change to day view, there are no events, and you would need to be running a lot of events for this to be a very useful view. In most cases, the lists view is probably the best default. But if you get the pro version, there are another four views you can add, like summary, photo, week, and map view. Mention should also be made of Avada layouts. It isn't mandatory to use a layout with the events calendar, but it's completely possible. Let's say you wanted to add a custom page title bar to every event. It's very quick and easy. I'll just go to layouts and create a layout called events. In the conditions, I'll make it active for all events. That saves and I can close that. Now I'll just take a little shortcut and add a page title bar layout section I made earlier called events PTB. And now if we go back to the event and refresh, you can see the page title bar at the top. This is just pulling the title using dynamic data, but you could put anything you wanted to here. And this will now be at the top of all single events. Please see the Avada Layouts documentation linked below for more details on that feature. Okay, so finally there is the very useful events element. You will find this in the elements list if the events calendar plugin is active. This element allows you to place your events anywhere in your content, much in the same way the blog or postcards element allows you to place blog posts wherever you like. It also works in a similar way, allowing you to select categories to display, and it has a number of layout options. Here on the front page of the church prebuilt, we can see the element down the page, showing the next four events. To go through the full functionality of that element, please see the how to use the events element video, linked below. Okay, that's about it for this video. Thanks for staying with me. The events calendar is a very useful plugin indeed if you run any sort of events at all. And as you have seen, in conjunction with Avada, it works a treat and can be customized in many ways to suit your needs. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the events calendar with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.